In this video, I'd like to talk about groups as systems and how that affects communicating in small groups. So first of all, let's clarify, what do we mean by a system? When we talk about systems and groups, we're saying it's a set of interconnected parts working together to form a whole in the context of a changing environment. So there's a little bit to break down here. Again, a set of interconnected parts working together to form a whole in the context of a changing environment. So let's take a look at, at some of these things and how a system works. When we talk about interconnected parts, we're talking about uh, all things working together and, and moving as one and, and building off one another. And so we'll, we'll break that down a little bit here. And they form a whole uh, that's greater than the sum of those parts. We'll talk about that. That's called synergy. And then the changing environment. We're going to talk about adaptability and how a system needs to be able to adapt. And, and if not, what happens? But so the basic process of a system is this. We have what I like to call the puts, uh, because they all input. So uh, we start with, every group starts with an input and inputs. And groups have to have inputs. They have to have things coming in. We have to have materials coming in as a group. We need knowledge. We need instructions. We need resources, whether that's physical resources or intellectual resources or whatever. We have these things we have to feed into the group in order to, so that the group will have what it needs to be successful. Again, that could be that could be knowledge and information. It could be money. It could be physical resources like parts if you're building something or, you know, whatever it is. Maybe it's just a copier. Uh, but we have all these inputs that, that go into making a group successful. If at any point you stop getting inputs, when you when you fail to have inputs, it's what we call a situation called entropy. And, and when you fail to stop having inputs come in, then your group is going to shrink. It's going to group. It's going to cease development. It's going to stop growing and, and it's going to stop being effective because of that entropy. The same way that if you if you stopped using a muscle, if you just stopped using your right arm at all, stop doing anything with your right arm, eventually those muscles would uh, cease to be as firm and wouldn't be as useful and, and it wouldn't be helpful to you. So we don't want that for groups. So we have um, the inputs and we need to keep things coming, feeding into those inputs so we don't experience entropy in a group. So once we have input, once we have things coming in, then we, we go through the process of what we call throughputs. A group takes that material, they take that knowledge, and they, they, they mold it to what that group needs, or they take that, that, those resources, they take that copier and put it to use, and however they're going to do that, it, it changes as part of that group process that the group uses it and changes it, and that's what we call throughput. So we have inputs coming in from outside the, the group and outside those types of things, and then uh, we have those throughputs then, the, the way that the group uses those things. And the, the rules and structure that, that surrounds those throughputs and determines how a group will process them and how a group will use those resources and those inputs is what we call structuration theory. Those are the rules that surround, you know, what's the process for? Once we get an input, what are we going to do with it? Who's going to be in charge of what? How are we going to talk about this? Are we going to vote? Is it going to be democratic? Or is it going to be, you know, one leader making the decision and directing everybody else? All of that goes in, is, is part of what we call structuration theory. And those are just the rules and guidelines surrounding the throughputs and how we're going to do that as a group. Then eventually, the group ideally, hopefully, will have what we call outputs. Um, so we take the inputs and we process them through the throughputs, and then we uh, the, the end product, whatever we put out, and that's called the output. Whether that output is a report, whether it's a suggestion, whether it's some sort of you know physical thing. If you're a group building a house and your Habitat for Humanity, then that output is a house. If you're a group just putting together ideas in a report, then then the report is the output for that that particular group. Well, whatever it is, that output is what the group produces. Okay. So we take the inputs. We move them through the group in what we call throughputs, and then eventually out the other side come the outputs. So we have the puts there. So I want to touch briefly, too, on what we call the interconnectedness of parts. And there are a couple things that are really critical to understand about that. Every every group works as a system, which means, you know, they're all interconnected. Uh, it's kind of, if you think of it kind of like an ecosystem in the woods, right? You have the trees, but you also have the plants that live below the trees that depend on, you know, the, sh the shade or the rain or whatever whatever they're getting from that. And then you have the animals that, that survive there and that, that are natural to that habitation. And, the, and it's all connected. And when you remove something or you change something about that ecosystem, it affects everything that's a part of that system, right? And that's everything that's a part of that woods. And so 
Um, so that's what we mean by interconnectedness of parts in a group as well. Uh, everything is connected within that group, between the people and the inputs and throughputs and so forth, and everything is connected. And you, you know, it's like Jenga. You move one piece, and there's a possibility that it's either going to strengthen or weaken that structure, depending on. But but everything is going to be affected. Okay. So in groups we have what we call the ripple effect, and I think of this like when you throw a, a, a little pebble or a stone or whatever into a nice calm pond, you get those ripples that come out, as you can see in that picture, right, that ripple out from there. Uh, when something happens in a group, it has a ripple effect. Something may happen to one person either in the group or outside of the group. Maybe you're outside, outside of the group, that person is in a car accident or has a death in the family or something like that. That's going to impact the others based on their ability to do work. Or something may happen within the group, either you don't get the inputs that you need or the resources that you need, or you have some conflict between two group members, that's going to ripple out and affect everybody in that group and affect that entire system. So the interconnectedness of parts means that in groups you have what we call the ripple effect, and we need to understand that, that, that what one person does or what happens to one person is going to affect everybody in that system and everybody in that group in some way. Let's have what we call synergy, and synergy can be a very, very positive thing, right? So by synergy, we mean that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. So if you've ever done any, you know, braiding or looked at how rope is made or anything like that, you know that if we just line up these these threads, these pieces of thread side by side, they'd be strong and they'd have some tensile strength to them, right? But not as much as when we braid them. When we put those together, and you can see this particular rope is made of braids, that are, of strings that are braided, and then they're braided together, right? So <clears throat> when we braid things, we find that it increases exponentially the strength uh, of that, that thread, that fabric, or whatever, right? So um, that's the same thing that can happen in a group. You get this synergy, and, and you get these people together, and the sum is greater than the whole of the parts. You may look at these individual parts and say, okay, 1 plus 1 plus 1 is going to equal 3. But we find in groups that when you get these people together, and you get these different ideas, and you get these different heads together, that 1 plus 1 plus 3, or 1 plus 1 plus 1 could equal 3, but more likely, if it's if it's a really positive group synergy, 1 plus 1 plus 1 could equal 5, 6, 7, and, and even more than that. <coughs> you may get more than just the individual components of each, each member of that group. That's what we call synergy, when you have that kind of uh, positive interconnectedness. Okay? But it works the other way as well, what we call negative synergy. Just like we can braid things together and make things stronger, make things do better, we can also use that, that, uh, that braided together rope to create a noose, in, in effect, to, to kill our group. Um, when we all start heading you know, off the cliff together like lemmings without really thinking, we get this really negative spiral going, then that can be an issue. Or if we, or if we you know, all decide to, to take a left turn, and we go full speed on that left turn when we should have taken a right instead, that's negative synergy. We're all, you know, barreling towards our own destruction together as part of that group. So um, we need to be aware that negative synergy can happen as well. So just as synergy can be a really, really powerful force for, for positive things in a group, negative synergy can, can do just the same thing in a, in a bad way for a group. The last thing we need to think about is adaptability or changing environment. When we talk about environment, what we mean really is context. What's the context that we're working in? Is this the work group? And if so, is this a formal work group? Is it more of a task force? Is it a little less formal? Uh, what's our call to action there? Or is this a community group, church group, things like that that will affect how we do things? And, and the context is so important, and that environment is so important to the group. And context may change as well. You may uh, find over time in a group that the, that the your mission changes, your your environment changes, your context changes, your your call to action changes. So we need to be prepared for that. Uh, specifically, we need to, to be aware of what we call dynamic equilibrium, right? And this is sort of that balance between change and stability. Uh, stability can be good for groups and and allows us to to establish rules and establish you know kind of procedures for these things and and common ways of doing things and depending on people. But at the same time change is necessary in groups, and whether it's necessary or not, whether we want it or not, change is going to happen in these groups and in every situation. So dynamic equilibrium has to do with balancing the two of those. I kind of set it up here on a, on a teeter-totter. You know, we need to balance the two of those and find some stability, but also be adaptable to that change and, and be able to, to handle that change and manage that change effectively. It really comes down to, to three different principles here on, on how well we uh, handle this dynamic equilibrium. First of all, the degree of change. When we find when organizations change too much all at once, 
that degree of change can be uh, can be difficult to handle when it's when that change is extreme when we change things in a wholesale manner as opposed to changing things incrementally organizations and groups tend to find change a little more manageable and a little more palatable easy to swallow when it happens incrementally instead of all at once we're going to you know we're just going to wipe out the system and try something completely different that degree of change can be difficult for group members and and systems to to manage and to accept also the rate of change I, I alluded to this earlier but how quickly is that change happening you know if we have this change that's happening but we can take it over time in chunks now that doesn't mean we can stretch it out forever but if we have a manageable amount of time that we can process this change and and enact this change and and put it to work then that's a very different situation than saying to somebody we need to change immediately right now uh, you know, and we're going to rapidly do this in a hurry and without you know much forethought or whatever that can be a challenge for a system to accept and to, to really manage as well and then finally the desirability of that change if things are working and yet we're going to have a wholesale change then that change is not desirable so we need to be uh, kind of aware of what's the call for this change is it desirable is it something that people are going to see as effective and productive and if so then they're going to be behind it but if it's something that seems unnecessary and and like it's going to have a negative impact then obviously people are going to be resistant to that too so these are the factors we need to consider when we're thinking about change what's the degree of that change is it happening happening in appropriate degrees is it happening at an appropriate pace and a manageable pace and is it something that is desirable uh, on behalf of the system and the group all of those things are going to make it much more acceptable if we can if we can manage those uh, properly please feel free to email me with any questions that you have about groups uh, working as systems and systems and groups i'm happy to answer questions and and uh, engage in that dialogue with you via email so uh, don't hesitate to to let me know in the meantime happy communicating